Mm-mm. No regrets. No regrets. No time waste. There's no time to waste. And I nothing know else. Each one of you, there's no time to waste. Come on. Be about your father's business. Nothing wasted and nothing lost equals purpose. Who yes. said, Amanda, you're powerful, girl. Oh, my goodness. I got to say that one more time. This is helping. If it's helping the audience, I need you to send a message, comment in the section if this is helping you because it's really helping me. I'm going to ask everyone to subscribe. Victoria, you're on your job. Turn on the bell and choose always so that you're always notified when Evangelist Sandra uploads and goes live. Um, anybody else in the audience have a question for Dr. At this time, uh, this is helping me, Amanda said. We're going to bring Amanda in because she's going to share with us a quick testimony mm-hmm. about purpose. Yes. So um, when I was growing up, especially in the church, a lot of emphasis was placed on knowing your purpose. And mm-hmm. um, you got to know your purpose. You got to know who you are. Well, for a time, I didn't know. And everyone told me that I should, but no one told me how or how to go about it. And Mm -hmm. I really had to do exactly as Dr. Thomas has been stating tonight and seek God. Um, I had to seek God for it. Um, I I learned I came into my purpose by waiting and waiting, Mm -hmm. waiting patiently as far as time and waiting as far as serving. And doing what my hands found to do, participating even in the ministry of helps, just whatever I was able to do that I found to do that could be a blessing that was helping, you know, move forward God's purpose and move forward, be a blessing to someone. And through that, um, God began to reveal purpose to me. I had to be intentional. I had to lean into my God given gifts and talents and and not be afraid to do what God was leading me to do, taking advantage of opportunities, um, pushing past that fear. You know, sometimes you feel past it and move forward. And, and in that, continuing to seek God, even as you as God begins to reveal your purpose to him to you, you have to continue to seek him. I continue to seek him and I still seek him concerning my purpose now because. I've come to realize that finding my purpose is a journey and not an event. It's not a one-time thing where you you just discover it and the light bulb comes on and it's, oh, it's all there. But God continues to reveal your purpose because it's bigger Mm -hmm. than you. It's bigger and God reveals it at a rate which we can handle it. Because sometimes if we knew the full of all that God had planned and the impact that our life would have, we would, you know, we would be outdone and, and just... We, we wouldn't even believe it. So yeah. just continuing to seek him, doing what our passion is, the things that we love to do, using our gifts. Those are things that have helped me um, come into my purpose and to continue and to be a blessing and to help and be able to see some fruit from what I'm doing as well. Oh, thank you so much for sharing that. We're going to go longer. We're going to go longer. You know why? This is helping people. I got a message that said, somebody said on the YouTube channel, they had to get it. They had to go and buy this. It's, it's purposeful. It's it's the moment. It's the season. It's the time for you to get this. It's very beautiful. You can go on Sandra's Authors Forum shop, and you can also purchase this book from the shop, all right? Sandra's Authors Forum shop. There is a link that will um, allow you to make that pur- purchase. Can you give us your website as well, doctor? It's uh, the website. I have it listed on there. It's www.em-pwrinc.com. And actually, there is a um, there is a uh, product and donation page on the website. So they can go directly to that page and, and order it. And it'll put the ad, you'll put your information in there. And again, that's with the, everything included and it's and it's done. So they can go directly to the website. So again, it's www.em-pwrinc.com. Very good. And it's on the screen right there. You can go there now and check her out. She is a woman that you should know. She is a woman that you should know. Um, many people... Uh, 
you know, are out there in the world. And sometimes they're not um, portraying themselves as a person you should know. And I remember growing up, um, there was a show, I believe, and it's called Someone You Should Know, or you can report to um, a news station if you knew somebody that the world should know. Well, Dr. Thomas is someone you should know. You should share this live because this is food for your soul. It is food for your mind. It is food for your heart. It is food for your eyes. It's something that you can take with you to bed at night. Go and share, share, share. When you were in the military, um, doctor, we were talking about that. When you were away trying to better your life, um, we talked about the tests and trials that you ran into. How long did you stay? All right. You took, all right, let's talk about this. You took you with you. That's something you were talking to me about. What a powerful statement. What have you learned that will empower you to be your best you? So do you remember when we were talking about when you came out, what challenges you faced? And you said this, I took me with me everywhere I go, went. What did you mean by that? That means, um, again, this goes back to working on you. This goes back to you. You know, we can move from one side of the country to the other. We can run, we can go. But no matter where you go, you're taking you with you. So this is why it's important. Um, to, and, and as the, the young lady just so eloquently spoke in, in her, when she was giving her testimony, and 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 you, I can tell she's taking herself with her through each step, and and allowing to do that. You have to take you with you. So no matter where you go, and if I'm messed up here, I'm gonna be messed up in South Dakota. I'm gonna be messed up in New York. If I'm messed up at this job, I'm gonna be messed up at the next job. If I'm messed up at this church, I'm gonna go to the next church. If I'm messy at this church, I'm gonna be messy at the next. So you take you with you. So this is why. Uh, working on you, all of us, working on ourselves every day because no matter where we go, we take ourselves with us. And so when I and 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 you take you with ever you go, is is powerful because you know a lot of times, and it's not that things don't happen and people don't do things, but I'm going with I'm still going over to the next place. So when you're faced with that same challenge, when you have to deal with that same thing, you're still taking you. Have I grown to now where Sandra says something? She can she just talking. I'm still gonna keep moving, or am I gonna ref, am I am I gonna keep on reacting every time something happens? Or am I going? It's the difference between reacting and responding. So once I start growing, I start responding and I stop reacting. And sometimes response means saying absolutely nothing. You know, sometimes means leaving things. I, I've recently, I was sharing with Miss Sandra, I've had two people walk out of my life. One's a lifehood, childhood friend, and one from another year's. Neither one of them I've done anything to. But see, a lot of times what I had to learn is that people will treat you that way. That means they can ostracize me and kind of push me to the side. It's not me that they're bothered. It's the fact seeing me being me, seeing me taking me with me. Come on. Them, it forces them to see themselves for who they are. So when you take you with you, be prepared for opposition. Be prepared for people to leave. Be prepared for people to walk away. Be prepared to for the invitations to stop. I remember preaching at my church and said, when the blessings come, the invitations gonna stop. So don't think those same people, you know, we people will pray, pray on you, or pray for you. Everybody's not gonna be happy. So when I say take you with you. That's why you got to make you strong. That's why you got to make you powerful. That's why you got to know who you are. You got to know who you are. You got to know what your purpose and stand on it. So no matter what, you take you with you. So you, that means you become unmovable. You become unshakable because you have God inside of you. So when you have God inside of you, I'm going to take me wherever I go. That could be for the good or that can be for the bad. But you're still going to take yourself wherever you go. You can't get away from it. <laughs> Wherever you go, you're you're there, you're present. So make sure you're you are your best you. 
Mm -hmm. Amanda said, I'm going to have to go back and listen to this once again, because this is good stuff tonight. Mm -hmm. This will help us to grow for sure. Thank you for that comment. Listen, God is so good to us. We haven't even gone through half of the questions. All right. Um, Look at this one. During your discovery, you said, I have people right now waiting on you to fall. Mm -hmm. What lessons are you learning not to preoccupy your mind with the baggage? Because this is sure enough baggage. Well, you know what happened? One of my former pastors, he said, you have to stop letting people take up real estate in your mind. Come on. Um, now I went through a process because I, one thing I had to learn now, and my older sister had to teach me because somebody mean, when I say somebody means something to me is to the heart. I'm going to the end with you when they say ride or die, that's where I am. But I had to learn that just because I mean, they mean that to me, don't right. mean I mean that to them. That's key. So, so you, you're going to, you're going to lose some things or some people going to walk away. And I said, if they walk away, they were never for you in the first place. You're going to go through some grieving. I went through a grieving process. I went through probably almost two months. The last person I met her in the military and it's nothing in the world, nothing in the world. I wouldn't have done for her. Uh, matter of fact, she, she, she recently did the same thing that I did as far as the business from, from, from beginning to the end, I was there. I wanted her to succeed. But the thing I had to learn is uh, when I, when, when you, when you, sometimes we were blinded because we were so committed. We're blinded because we're so connected to people. We because we love or care about them so much. We see things God shows us things we don't want to see. And 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 so when I began to see some things, and she made a statement one day. You know how people say stuff, and sometimes you play it off. The Holy Spirit say, "Did you catch her tone?" Mm -hmm. And I have to play it back. And say, did you catch her tone? Because you know people say, "Oh, well, I'm gonna be there for you, whatever decision you make. I got your." That wasn't the case is when I made a statement to her, say, did you catch her tone? And from that point forward, God turned it around to where there, as close as we were, I shared nothing else personal with her. Stayed there, kept being there. But then I made a this personal decision for me, for my life, for my family. And they looked at this as a betrayal, had nothing to do with them. Anybody that's bothered when you make a personal decision for your life, for your family, for your household, they're not your friend, not your girl, not your boy, not your sister. And they have to respect. It don't mean if Sandra and I were friends, it don't mean that I, I have to tell Sandra everything. It means Sandra respects me enough to know that if I need to talk to her about something, I'm going to come. It, she's not going to get upset because I may have that conversation with Amanda but I might not have had it with her. It might be a reason why I had that conversation with Amanda. So it's about respect. It's about that. And so you, you, you're going to lose some things. I'm telling you, I read a thing on Facebook. It says my circle is so small, I can call myself. <laughs> my circle has become so small, I can call myself. I probably have one or two. And I notice it's like the more God bless me again, I'm the type of person always trying to pull. Come on, let's go. Showing somebody, let's do this, laying it out. But you have to, and I had to learn. You know, we hear all the time, everybody can't go with us. I wasn't hearing that. I'm still trying to pull and go because I want everybody to win that's around me. But sometimes people look at that the whole wrong way. They look at that God had one blessing and he gave it to you and that's it. He ain't blessing nobody else till he come back. So rather than, than, than treat you how they should, they'll dismiss you because that means that they don't have to face who they are. So when people walk out of your life, stop taking it as an insult. It's their loss because you know who you are. You know who you were born to be. You know your purpose. You know you were created. You belong to God. So we have to grow and know my, be prepared that if it's just you and God, that's enough. Be prepared. It's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm not popular. I'm not part of the crowd. I don't get no invite. Guess what? I ain't got to point. I'm good with that. I'm good with that. Be prepared to walk alone. If it means you're walking alone, you're not alone because God is there. Humanly wise, we want that compassion. We were created with those things that, for that desire. Whoa. But God don't desire us to hold on anything that's taken away from us, anything that's hurting us, anything that's causing us to be less than. And if you have to compromise to be in somebody's presence, they definitely didn't come from God. God's not going to have anybody in your life that's going to cause you to compromise. 
bid them farewell, march on to Zion, march into your purpose, and you watch what God's going to do. Matter of fact, he's going to put some people in your life that's going to be what you need to be. He's going to give you that support system. He's going to surround you with those people. It may seem lonely. Trust me, I, I've been there. Still going. It seems lonely sometimes. But then again, one of the things I had to learn, you got to be comfortable with yourself before you can be comfortable with anybody else. I always got to have somebody around. Never want to be. If you're in a relationship, fine. If you're not, wait. Don't pick and pull. Don't just pull anything just to be. You have to get, if you can't be comfortable with yourself, how in the world are you going to be comfortable with anybody else? Come on. Girl, I'm going to need you to take a break. You need some water. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. You are doing ministry tonight, and I want to commend you. You are doing ministry. You're encouraging the people. And I want to tell you thank you from the bottom of my heart. If you all are enjoying this ministry, it is now time for you to send in a gift. What do we say? Sow a small seed and reap a large harvest. Yes. I'm not going to tell you what amount to gift, but I'm going to ask you to do something for me tonight. Ask God what he would like for you to gift to this ministry. In order for us to be on live show like this, and this is top shelf, it costs money. And mm -hmm. so Kingdom Purpose TV, I need you to send to our cash app. You see it on the screen. Please go now, wherever your money is, use your credit card, use whatever form to send in a donation because nobody eats for free. All right. Is that correct? Nobody comes to the dinner table to eat for free. Food cost money. All right. This is your opportunity now to sow a seed. What is it? Sow a small seed. Amanda has placed on here the various opportunities and forms that you can gift. All right. And uh, purchase this lovely book, Finding Your Purpose. Listen, she said, she didn't say I'm finding my purpose. She did this for you so you can find your purpose. That is ministry, first class ministry. You said a prayer in this book. You said multiple prayers in this book. Um, I want to go to one of them, all right? Your mm -hmm. prayer. You said, Father God, help me to understand that life and people may try to break me. But when my life is wrapped in your mercy and then your mercy says no, <laughs> help me to hold on to the fact that I will never be broken. Did you all hear that? Can you elaborate on how you got to that place? Because that's it's, it doesn't come overnight. You don't reach that level of uh wisdom overnight what happened life um uh, life um everything from the beginning to the end just just my life and 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 you know oftentimes even when we're going through things we just think oh my god it's gonna take us out but have you ever experienced something that just seemed like it was going to take you down and break you, but you were stronger on the other side. You were better on the other side. It don't always feel good going through it. And so I, what I meant by that, no matter what you go through in life, no matter what you endure in life, no matter what somebody tries to do in life, uh, the, the, I always say the worst thing you can do is, is touch. He said, touch not my anointing and do my prophets no harm. He wasn't speaking just to be speaking. So when somebody tries to do something to you, when somebody tries to put their, even put in your mouth your words, that's why your words, words have power. When somebody tries to, they can try, but God has you, as long as you're in the palm. Now, where we're in danger at is when we get out. Hmm. As long as we stay in the cusp of God, as long as we stay, that's why he said mustard seed is all I need. 
<laughs> if you don't have anything but a mustard seed, sometimes, and I know you have things. I have things when I say mm -hmm. I almost took me out and on a daily basis, when we thank God for being clothed and in our right minds, you don't know what you're saying until your mind's been tested. So when these people that are committing suicide and taking life, people, I don't see how they can do it. I don't see how they can do it. Well, I had the thoughts. Mm. I remember I was going through this depression. And I went to the to the dentist and he gave me these and just these steroids. And I had this allergic reaction. So I don't know if the steroid. I found myself on my sofa planning out my suicide. My God. So, so, so some things and happen, but God, God always has, whether it's a call, a person, or a thought. All he needs, that's why he said a mustard seed. That's all he needs for you to hold on. If you can't say nothing but Jesus, that's all you need. He knows what that means. He knows what that cry means. When he say weeping man do it for a night, but joy comes in the morning. When he say trouble don't last always, it don't last always. It seems like it does. But when you get on the other side of the trouble, it means you're standing taller. You're standing bigger. You're able to withstand. And all it's doing is getting ready. I said get ready for the shift. Because it means God's getting ready to shift you. If you're going through something, it means God's getting ready to shift you. If the attacks are coming from the east, from the west, it means God's getting ready to shift you. But just because you're being shifted, just shifted, just know you will not be broken. And you will not be broken because you belong to God. Always say that the Lord's reputation is at stake. If God does not do what he promised he would do, Satan wins. That will never happen. So if you can remember nothing else, God, you promised. Woo, God, you promised. God's reputation is at stake. He is not going to let the enemy have you. He, if, if God walk away from one of us, Satan wins. It'll never happen. It'll never happen. No matter what you're going through. God has you. And matter of fact, it's at our lowest point. It's at our weakest point when he's stronger. When no one else is there, when nothing else is there, he's actually holding you. He's actually holding you up. He's holding back the winds. Things that are coming, God keeps things from us that we don't even know anything about. My God. That delay means he's keeping something. That person he moved, they weren't good for you. They're in the way of your purpose. They were shaking that. That one thing that you just had to have, it was going to be your soul or your, or, your, or your salvation. He took it away. That's what God will do. You won't be broken. Well, not that you won't hurt. Not that you won't feel lonely. Not that you might not be empty. You will not be broken. And you will come out stronger on the other side. That's why when th people do things and say things, I, I get a little nervous when it's time for me to go and say something. But I tell you, I can stand in, whether it's at the Pentagon or on the corner, I can stand anywhere and I can speak with authority. I can speak with, with fullness. I can speak with confidence. Why? Because I know that I know that I know. And I know what I have. I know what was put in me. The world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. They might try to hinder but they can't take it away because when God has destined something to happen, it will happen and it won't break you. The shift. shift. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sandra, the shiftologist, honey, you need to be uh, Dr. Thomas, the shiftologist, honey, because you're shifting people right now. You're shifting from the place where they are right now to the place where God wants them to be. And that is our mission. That's our earthly mission. I love it. I love it. I love it. All right. You ready for some more? Yes. <laughs> yes. You said your mom passed away when you were how old? Uh, she passed away in 2006. Um, I was an adult and I had my children and hey, I remarried. So uh, how old was I in 2006? I'll be 52 now. So however that was back in 2000, she's been gone like 14, 15 years ago. Um, and you know, that's why I was hoping when you have mama and grandma, you're doing great. Mm -hmm. When you have one, you're doing good. Mm -hmm. But when they're both gone, you better know something. So mm -hmm. I'm talking to everybody that's on the line. So that's why I tell my children, my son, a couple weeks ago, you know, sometimes, you know, we gotta, we getting, we, and then we gotta get out of God's way. Because when my mother passed away, I developed a no nonsense, tell them done with it. Foolishness done with it because well, I know when God took the one, when He took my ace, when He took my with my forever, my everything, when He took my, I that was it. It God had to tell me that I was done with foolishness. Put a pen in it, 
And so it was some things I just wasn't, my mom was gone. So when you, when, when my mother passed away, I knew, but I, I was thankful and grateful that from, from, from that she had had us that I, that I knew God because of my mom that, you know, my mother had very little give me material wise, but what but God's grace and his mercy, what you see now is a result of a, of a broken woman, is a result of a single mother, is a result of a woman that raised five children by herself because my mother had very little. We sometimes didn't even have a car, but we never missed an appointment. We were never late. And I always used to see my mother gather her papers and didn't realize well, you, that's why your children, somebody's watching you. Somebody's always watching you. And I didn't realize what she was doing was getting ready for the appointment. So I, so now I went to the bank to, to, to open up the, the bank account for the nonprofit and the bank manager said, she said, I wish more people would be like you when they come in here. I had everything. When I go somewhere, I kind of look on the back end of something. If, it, even if it's something I'm going to accomplish. So my mother taught us these things. You get there. She said, you do your best. If nobody else ain't doing it, you do it. My mother was the type of person, you go to somebody's house, she's that one in the kitchen. She's that one cleaning up. She's going to leave it better than when she came. My mother taught us, you get there, you do your best, you be on time, you be prepared, and you do what you're supposed to do, always. I remember when I had my children, now she would keep them for you to go to work. Every now and then for you, some was her thing. If they can't go, you don't need to go. So my mom, when she when my mother passed, that was it was a, it was a pivotal point for me. Um, in my life, it was a point for me to 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 move and grow and do some things. But when I tell you what my mother gave me, money can't buy. I don't regret a moment of it. My mother was strong, unmovable, unshakable woman of God, and so right. I, I have no regrets. I know that I would not be who I am today if it wasn't for the mother that I had. So that's what my mother meant for me. And I used to, I used to always say, you know, I was that, I'm the youngest of five, but I, I try to tell my siblings that, you know, she left me in charge. They don't really listen. They like, kind of <laughs> laugh. You know, everybody know the baby's always in charge, even though that, you know, you know so it. I used to always mess with my mom and she, you know, I was that one. My mother knew if there was an opportunity, I'm taking it. I used to mess with it. She'd be like, where are you at? I say in Japan. <laughs> She said, you just might be. My mother knew that was that was nothing. I was saying it. But if I wanted to go to Japan, I was going to Japan. And That's my right. mother knew that. But I, I knew that because of what was put in, into me and what was instilled into me. And watching my mother, it's like, and that's another reason for the foundation because it's like I watched my mother exist. That's what, It's women in the world, they just exist. But something stuck, something, she was stuck. And so I, my mother had, oh, she had potential, but she didn't live out that potential. Something in my mother's life stuck her. So part of one of the programs that I have with the foundation is helping women get unstuck because I believe that a woman with her mind is a powerful thing. That's why people try to mess with your head. That's why they try, if they can, if they can control your mind, they can control you. So, so my mother taught me to always be and always do. So that's why today I can do nothing but my best. I can do nothing but give my all. I can do nothing but show up. You know, growing up, we couldn't, I thought, you know, we had now, you know, they have the stuff we had to wear. She didn't play that. She was like, where's your sleeves? Where's the rest of your dress? So now I'm still in the store now shopping, looking for dresses with sleeves on, even though it's hard to find them because everything is cut out, you know, because that's what my mother taught me. And so that's just what my mom meant for me. But at the same time, um, we got to go to New York. She went on. Oh, my mother died from a brain aneurysm. And so she used to clean our church in Alabama. I saw my sister truck at the church. I said, oh, she's cleaning the church for mom. I thought mom was gone. The Lord had me to stop at the church. I didn't know that my mom was there and she had my sister's truck. I had no idea. That was my last conversation with my mother. My she was go to New York, told my uncle she had a migraine. He went to the store, came back out. They determined she had had a migraine headache. She passed away in New York. And, and so we, we ended up driving up there. My sister, we didn't have, you know, we're from Alabama. We didn't have no snow tires, but we were going. We got to the top of this mountain. It was so deep. My sisters, they slid and went to the guardrail. It was only God that kept them from going off the edge. And then my brother tried to drive and they slid again. So we got to the bottom. My uncles were like, just stay there. We're coming. And so when we got to the house, they're like, okay, we'll take you all tomorrow. I said, either take me to the hospital or give me the directions. I'm right. going to my mother tonight. 
And so I got to visit with her and I told her, I said, mom, I said, you're a fighter. I said, but if you're ready to go, it's okay. And she squeezed my hand. And so I was in Alabama, called back to the hospital about something. My uncles made the decision. Uh, you know, it happened so fast that we didn't get a chance to just, they made the decision, take her. Our mama had been taken off. Life support had passed away. Nobody had called me. My goodness. But all in all, um, because I live, she lives. Because I move, she moves. Because I, I do, she does. And so that's why some of the donations coming into the foundation will be to start a, a scholarship. Because my mother never made it to college, but I'm determined that her name is going to get there. I'm determined that she was yes. about community service. Yes. So, yes. And, and I'm determined that some young ladies are going to get to go and get yes. to share that. So all of these things is what make up empower when i say m dash pot that's empowerment because that's my whole thing is to empower women and girls sharing is caring don't be selfish and keep all of this goodness to yourself press mm -hmm. that share button press that heart come on send a message to us show us a comment let us know that you're here and that you are enjoying this power packed show tonight mm -hmm. listen you said another prayer and you said, daddy, I love that. When you started with that one, I was already there, right? <laughs> That's a personal one. You said, thank you for knowing who I am. That's big. And assuring that the blood of your precious son, Jesus Christ, is the reason that I will never be forgotten. Lord Jesus, so many people feel like they have been forgotten, that that they have missed their purpose and that nobody sees them and they uh everything is over with and they're throwing up their hands and oh my gosh. When I read this, I said, somebody need these words. This verbiage is point on. What made you come up with that? Again, my life. You know, again, that he bought me. I cannot, that's why I'm, I'm at the point where no matter, I ask Lord, I say, you know, you have to be careful to ask God for, because, you know, he just, I give it. And I had to stop learning to say what I'm not going to do, because that kind of seems like sometimes the roads are going down. But um, I had to, you know, through everything that I went through and everything that I, People have forsaken, people have walked away, people have deemed me to be nothing. And like I said earlier, even today, I have people that are waiting for my demise. I have people that are sitting back. I have the person I spoke to you about earlier. They couldn't get to me any other way. So they tried to now get to my adult children. I, I, There's just some things, you know, you go through as a mom that you don't share with your children. Exactly. And, and my thing is because my children pretty much grew up with her. I don't, I don't even hate her to the point. I don't want to be the reason why they don't talk to her. I, I'm, I, you know, if, if I, I welcome that. So I don't like her daughter. I told, I sent her a message. I say, I'm always in your corner. I'm always here. I have never spoken an ill word to her daughter about her, even though that's what she does. She literally, I can't get you here. I can't get you there. I can't get you there. So let me try to, I don't even worry about somebody telling my children because at the end of the day, I'm still mama. And Come at the on. end of the day, my children know that they know that they know. They know if nobody else have their back. And my son never hear me talk negative. He I never he never hear me complain. He never hear me talk about it. So I know that my children, even though they may hear it, my children know enough about me to where I'm not even. I'm, I've gotten to the point to where I no longer feel the need to validate, to prove, to clear. If that's what you want to think, fine. That's what you want to hold on to because I'm moving, I'm going. And so I know that God, when I, when the, the blood of Jesus and God giving me his son and allowing me, as long as I know that I have God, as long as I know that he hasn't forsaken me, uh, that's all I need. That's all I need. It could be me, him, and, you know, we could be, we can get on a recline and we can kick back. And that's all that, I, that's all that I need. So when I say that, and that comes yes. from, life, that comes from, that personal relationship that comes from hurt, pain, rejection, that comes from weeping, that comes from pushing and pushing and pushing and doing. But that also came to finally getting to my point. That also came to finally understanding 
Um, cause you know, we run, I ran from my, I've, I've known for years that I was supposed to have a foundation I've known for you. And then other people, my husband has spoken. He said, you know, you're going to be in the pulpit. You know, you hear stuff, people talking. I'm like, yeah, you know, you just, and, and it's just like, but the more I, I, I move towards, you know, what God has people say, oh, you should be a preacher. I said, no, that ain't what he gave me to do. I'm doing what he gave me to do. Now I, I speak, I spoke, you know, when I had invitations, but that's not, that's not what he gave me. So my thing is staying in my lane and doing where he, you know, doing what he causes me to do. And, and you have to, when I tell you, um, it's a lot. I did not get here, Miss Sandra, like you said, overnight. Mm -hmm. I, I did not even get into the decision of walking away from, and I tell you when it came to my job, when, when it comes to the shift, see, God, I, I had a co-worker when I was teaching at Georgia State University. She said, you know, sometimes God will tap us and then we won't move. He'll start spanking us. Come on. God will allow something to happen to you. Just literally like, ah, oh, there ain't nothing. He goes, right. yeah. And then each time he comes back, it's bigger and it's stronger. And so I was at work, you know, about a month or so ago. And I, I have a history of migraines from the military. So I found myself having headaches like every day and then with the headaches that i have comes like this depression that sometimes lasts for a couple of days and when the headache is gone it's gone but it's i kept pushing okay lord one more thing you know one more investment property let me pay off this let me do this let me do that headaches kept coming kept coming went to the doctor the doctor took me off work till august in the midst of doing that i knew what was happening it's a shift i knew the shift was happening and when i made the decision that I was going to, okay, Lord, I hear you and I'm ready. Mm -hmm. I have them here or there, but when I tell you, I don't have, I have headaches every day. My so shift. So anytime God's getting ready to do something, you're going to start noticing some shifts in your life. Something's going to move. He tries to get our attention, baby girl. I'm knowing him. Baby girl, I'm knowing him. And then he just has to say, baby girl. And, and do you hear me now? And, and when God, he has to do some things, some things that are difficult. God never desires that we hurt, but mm -hmm. God will do what he has to do to mm -hmm. save us and to get our attention. And I said, okay, Lord, you have my attention. Some people, like when I closed my business, I had a personal care home, which I have still, and I'm renting it to another one, but I closed it. And after nine years, I still had clients. I was making money, but the gift that God has given me when he shifts, when it's time for me to move, I move. It might not make sense to you. It might look like to you like I'm just doing something, but I never just do that. And it's about trusting God in the shift. Because when he shifts, see, you want to go across the street, but God wants to take you around the world. You just want to, to pay that bill, but God wants to make it to where, you know, some people, well, if I could just get somebody to pay my electric bill, no, God wants it to be to where you don't have to go back to anybody for anything. Time lessons, life. Um, and I'm finally just at a point to where I know it's time for me to share. I know it's time for me to push out what God has given me. And so that's, that's, that's where this, that's where this comes from. Very good. I was thinking about while you were speaking the lyrics of, um, <clears throat> this is how I fight my battles. I'm surrounded. That's the name of it. It says, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. And it repeats it over again. This is how I fight my battles. Oh my God. I'm surrounded by Jesus Christ. And that's all that matters. It may look like I'm surrounded. Lord have mercy, but I'm surrounded by you. Nothing is as strong as your blood. Right here at your table, your blood and your body has overcome. Your blood and your body has overcome. I am surrounded by who? Oh, Pastor mm -hmm. can you share with us a poignant thought that you had during this show? Pastor Renford, <laughs> can you share with us a poignant thought that you've had 
during this show. Yes, there's so many thoughts. I Before this show, I was on with a long distance friend and many of the things that has been spoken by Dr. Chalmers is what we were discussing. So this is just like that double hitting it. And I thank God for all that had been said and done and I'm feasting. When you are a pastor, oftentimes you don't get the feasting level because you're giving out so much. And this is what we tell the people. But when you get it coming for you, that somebody is serving you and depositing into you, it's nothing like it. It's phenomenal. <laughs> it's phenomenal. The transparency and the truth of, and the words of wisdom, the knowledge and the understanding comes as it's spoken because the spirit of God is in it. I'm just glad to be here. I'm thinking about peace be still. If you can just um, see those words in your mind, peace be still. In a world where so much is going on, you know, we're losing loved ones left and right, sickness on the rampage, families are ill with this virus even today. And people are becoming weary and saying, when is this going to be over? I'm tired of this. Many mistakes are being made during this period. And I thought when this pandemic came, <laughs> silly old me, that everybody was going to straighten up and fly right. I just thought it. I said, there will be no more arguments in the family. People are going to begin to love everybody on a deeper level. This thing is going to rock us until we do what God has told us to do. Everybody is going to flood to the church and get baptized in Jesus' name and be filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. I just thought in my mind that this was an awakening season, that God was talking to his people, telling us, come on, you all, come on. This is the last call. Come on, get right, get right. But we don't see that taking place. And it kind of disturbs me, you know? But even with what you're saying, basically, doctor, you're saying everything is in God's control mm -hmm. and he masters it well. He does not need our help because <laughs> we would only mess it up like we messed up his beautiful world. Mm -hmm. How was the world when you came in it? I have many memories of when I was a little girl the world was pretty decent. I can go out and play in my front yard, backyard, side yard, and not have to worry about getting shot. What times are we in? Have you considered what this season is all about? Will you surrender your will to God's will? Will you come to Jesus right now? Ye that are weary, I shall die. You that are weak and vulnerable and sick and addicted and those that are, you don't know what to do. You don't, you don't have, you have many questions, but you don't have many answers. Will you come to Jesus? Come, why, uh, why is time? Because these are the last days, the last days. And he said, we are to work while it's day because night is coming. Mm when nobody can work. We're all busy right now doing the work of God, but there's gonna come a day and a time when we won't have work anymore. He's gonna say, cease from all of your labor. Well done, my good and faithful servant. That's, those are the words I wanna hear. I don't know what words you want to hear, but well done. It's what I'm working for each and every day. When I put my foot outside the bed, that's what I, that's what pushes me. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. When I lie down at night, I can hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. You did everything. You accomplished everything in this day that I expected you to do. My goodness. Jason and Amanda. Please share your thoughts. I'm just um, thanking the Lord for uh, testimony and transparency and um, the fact that how uh, what other things that happened 
to her probably would have had other people out of here a long time ago. But she took that and God is using that to bless multitudes of people. And the fact that she's she's leaving legacy for her children. And even the, it really hit me hard when she was saying, no matter what anybody says or do, people know her by how she is. Like she said, she don't have to talk to her kids about, you know, don't listen to what such and such and say because they know mama. They already know. And you, you and your life is a testimony already. So you walk it out. And you're not afraid to go to the Pentagon or to the president or to anybody. You know, who's inside of us is, you know, bigger than anybody else. We're all surrounded by him. So it's it was it's been a blessing the whole the whole time. I really enjoying it. Thank you. Very, very powerful session tonight. I'm so glad that we were able to tune in and to join and just be fed. It was it was the shot in the arm that we needed. You know, some people feel like they need a vaccine, but when you when you can get that word of God and some good encouragement and, and you know, really tune in to, to something that is pushing you forward into your purpose. Something, you know, when, when if you have the spirit of God in you and your spirit agrees with what is coming forth, it's such a blessing. It's such a boost. And um, I was I was just thinking about how so many people, people we know and people we probably don't even realize you know, maybe on the journey to finding their purpose and, and searching and seeking. So many people could benefit from what has been shared on tonight and even the book, you know, as we purchased and we're looking forward to to getting that and just, you know, diving in and digging deeper and allowing God to open it up and reveal it to us even the more. Because the more you receive of God, the more you want and the more inspired and encouraged and strengthened you are to move forward and to keep doing what he's called you to do and to keep pressing in. And that's my prayer for everyone tonight. And even my prayer for you, Dr. Thomas, that you, you stay strengthened and that you continue to move forward, that you be encouraged and that God blesses you to, to even see more fruit of the labor that you have, have put into, to the call on your life, because you know, it's it's it has a great impact, and and like I said, people that you you probably will never even see are being impacted by your obedience, being impacted by you taking advantage of opportunities that God places before you, by you being led by His Spirit, by you not giving up on the commitment that you have made. So we thank you tonight for all that you do. We thank you for sharing. We thank you for for staying in a position for being driven and continuing to do the work of the Lord and continuing to be a blessing to so many. Thank you. Thank you. That is phenomenal. Doctor, talk to us about your education. Um, at the age of 23, you went to college and all of that, but what did, what did you just accomplish uh, most recently? Um, earning my doctorate and uh, uh, doing COVID. As a matter of fact, um, my, my research was supposed to take place in person. You know, I went through IRB, which is the one that have, they have to approve, you know, all your stuff and everything was, and as soon as everything was proved, COVID hit. So I had to go back to IRB and, you know, they approved for me to go to go into some online nursing programs. I still had to have certain parameters to recruit people. Matter of fact, I had people as far, they had to be in the U.S., but I had people as far as Canada, actually that had reached out. And so, uh, but God let me knew that <clears throat> when I was getting, I got my, um, back when I got my, I got my bachelor's and my master's at the same time. And mm -hmm. then when I was finished with that, I was, I was done. I, you know, I was done and had no, had no intentions. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say PhD was the last thing on my list. It wasn't on my list. Me teaching wasn't on my list. I was, I wanted to, went to the college. I was going to be part-time clinical instructor. I went PR and work. I had my business, you know, but I had my plan. Mm -hmm. I sitting in an interview at the college and who leaves, uh, uh, you know, they go and come back out. I went for a part-time clinical instructor who leaves an interview with a job they never applied for. <laughs> and, and so they offered me a full-time faculty tenure track position. That's not, you know, I to, and outside I'm, I, I said, okay, inside I'm saying, uh oh. And I'm like, I could have at that point Say, okay, Lord, no. But all the way to the car, I said, okay, Lord. I said, I don't, I don't know what you're doing. 
I said, but okay. And it was because of that obedience and pushing. And so I went and went through that, went, was working, ended up going teaching, nursing. And so I was there and all of a sudden I found myself re-enrolling in school again, even though I said I was done. And, but the Lord let me know, you're getting this PhD, but it's, it, but it, it's not to use in your field. Mm. He said, I need you to get this doctor because I need you to have the credentials and the credibility I need for when you when you talk, when you speak. I need for when you do things, um, you know, the, the, the Ph.D., the doctor, it comes with it comes with a, a certain level of respect, a certain level of expectations. And he says, I need you to have those credentials for what you're going to do. So I knew when I was going that it had nothing to do with my sustaining. So that's why at my job, I'm like I got to the point. I don't want anybody's job. I'm not trying to social climb. I really don't want to do that. I'm sitting in this meeting that has nothing to do with me because my audience, he listened to everybody, stroke their back. And so I'm like, Lord, I'm just, the shift, you know, started coming. And so I know that I, he, I knew and he let me know that I needed that because the, the, the path that he has for me to travel, I was going to need, he was going to need people to be able to, to take me serious, to know that I've done the work, to know that I have the credentials and to be able to do it. So that's another thing. Oftentimes you may find yourself doing something and it may not necessarily be for where you are right now. It has may have something to do where God has taken you. And so this is again, which is why every opportunity that you have, because even when like I said, when I just tell people answer that story, I'm gonna tell you, I purchased my house last year. So I'm sitting in this attorney's office. He works for the seller. And we were talking and he was like, your inches where I just, he said, I just never seen it. I said, well, I work really hard, very financially responsible. I said, I don't have any, any debt. And so we was talking and he was saying, and so we got to talking about that. And so I just, you know, so I couldn't talk about that without how I got there and some things. Mm -hmm. And he says, you know, you need to be on somebody's show. You need to be. And he said, better yet, you need to write a book. And he says, your book needs to be called From GED to PhD. He my had no God. idea that is the title for my book. See, I had never met him. That, that is the title for my book. And so he purchased a lot of finding your purpose for his family. We're talking about a Caucasian attorney. He says, when that book is finished, I want to know. You know, and so we never know who we're going to meet and we never know whose path we're going to cross. And God will equip you to do, you know, everything it is that he has for you to do in your life. I love it. From GED to PhD. Somebody just sent me this. I want you all to read it yourselves. Pack your bags. You are moving to a place called Breakthrough. I if love it. Can, oh, That's if you can laugh on to say Whoever wrote that needs to do something with that. That that right. That wasn't, Somebody that just wasn't sent me that. that. They that, just said that you. Yeah. Huh? Me? They just sent it to me. And they said for me to pack my bags because I'm moving to a place called Breakthrough. They said, I've been bragging on you all day long. Now, only a God can do that. Only a God can do that. All right? So he said, your gift will make room for you and bring you before. What? What are your future goals, doctor? <laughs> you know, I, I don't know because it's like at the age of 40, <clears throat> 12 years ago, I had, a, you know, people have bucket lists. I had accomplished everything in my life that I wanted to do, mm. you know, to include having a business. So all of these things, extra, the bachelor's, the master's, the PhD, the, all this, this is all God. So it's like he, back then he said, okay, I'll let you do you. Now let you show, now let me show you me. Mm -hmm. So um, I have no idea. Uh, you know, like I said, that the, the, my goal is to, uh, of course, work at the foundation. I'm preparing to, um, I'm open up a, a CNA school because what I want to do with that, the women that I will meet, I believe that every woman needs something. Um, and so this is a certification that they can take wherever they go and mm -hmm. to always have it. And so um, that's something that he gave me to attach it to 
you know, to the foundation. So the women that can't afford to go to the school, my goal was to, again, seek sponsors or, you know, take the donations and do that. So I know as far as that, where God is taking me um, beyond that, um, I, I don't know. I know, I, I know that there's a shift and I know that um, something is coming. Okay. And I know that he's moving and I know that he's working for working things out. Um, I guess we'll have to have that conversation, um, you know, later. It's, it's coming, but I, I don't know. My, my goal is at, at this point is to um, walk in, 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 you know, in total of obedience. My goal at this point is to do what I know for years I was supposed to do. Um, that I guess the gift of gap, the gift to be able to talk and speak, this is something that God gave me long time ago. Um, and so my goal is to um, <clears throat> tighten up my shoestrings and, and, and get ready for the ride and see where he takes me. Oh, yeah. He's going to take you somewhere special, somewhere special. I would like for you, if you will, to say a prayer for those that have lost their way those that do not know what their purpose is, that God would align them in his will and in his way. Okay. Most graceful Heavenly Father, Lord, as we come before your throne of grace, Lord, we come with on knees uh, with a bending heart. We come, Lord, with our arms stretched open wide. Lord, we thank you for all of who you are. We thank you for your son, for your grace, for your mercy. Tonight I come before you, Lord, asking that you, you have some children out there that, that are weary. You have some children out there that are hurting. You have some children out there that feel like they have lost their way. But I, I need you to do something supernatural. I need you to do something, Lord, in their lives. Do something, blow their minds. Do something so they know it came from you. I need you to do something. There's somebody somewhere right now that was about to lose hope. I need for you to let them know, Lord, you said that weeping man do it for a night. Hallelujah. Joy comes in the morning. And when their morning comes, I need for you to magnify. I need for you to blow their minds. I need for you to set something in place that they will know that they know that they know. Lord, we, 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 we can't do anything without you. We, we can't do anything without you. There are some of your children right now, they, they feel they have nowhere to turn to. There's somebody right now that's contemplating on either taking their life or someone else's life. Lord, I need for you to seep into, give them a moment of clarity, just enough for you to see through the Holy Spirit into that, into that crack. And Lord, for you to get in their hearts and minds, give them something, give them hope, shake them up. Lord, don't let them have any rest, but Lord, let them know that you love them. Let them know that you have not forsaken them. There is nothing too hard for you. That's why you said, trust you. Lord, you said that your burden, you can carry the burden when they too, they're too heavy for us because we're trying to carry too much. Let them relinquish it to you tonight. Let them trust you tonight. Lord, I, I, mean, I, I speak, I, I, I speak from, 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 I, I speak from experience. I speak from being in the gutter most. I speak from being in a place where I felt like I couldn't go on any longer. I speak from a place where I feel like I'm not good enough. I speak from a place where I feel like not, no matter what I do, it will never be enough. I never want another human being to have to feel that. Lord, so only you have that power. But I ask you, the people that you have in those individuals' lives, Lord, that you will let them know we have a responsibility. We have a responsibility to those around. Do they know that you're soon to come? Do they know that no matter what they did, that you will forgive them? Do they know that you still love them? Do they know that 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 there's no one too wretched? There's no one too far. Do they know? that they still belong to you. That's our job. That's why you have us here. So whoever you place in our life, whoever you place in our heart, whoever's on this line, whoever's connected to someone else. Thank you, Jesus. Let us, Lord, reach outside of ourselves. Let us give hope to our brothers and our sisters. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. Most importantly, I thank you for the blood of your son. Hallelujah. Without him, that would be no us. In his name, I pray. Amen. Amen.